here's what I think is, is significantly different. When I was running Chrysler, we were somewhat singularly focused on the banking situation that started to melt down. Uh, it caused a tremendous amount of pressure on the auto industry, for example. I got a call at nine o'clock one night and said, Bob, you cannot do any more lease arrangements. And that was 60% of my business, for example, in Canada. But, but we were singularly focused on the financial banking crisis. Today, uh, Brian, what I think we're facing is, is the, the extent with which a CEO has to manage today is as broad and deep as I've ever seen it. I've been at this for 52 years now. And when you think about inflation, you think about supply chain, you think about the loss of labor, you think about massive re uh, uh, resignation and so forth. So the, the breadth of, of constituents that, that a CEO and a company has to try and satisfy, again, is as broad and as deep as I've ever seen it. And when you try to satisfy everyone, you end up satisfying no one. So the banking situation just adds another level of complexity. Now, if you, if you adhere to the, the, you know, the, the, the black swan theory, you try to prevent or put in place remedial actions to prevent that. But what we're seeing today, I mean, who went to bed Thursday night thinking that their deposits were going to be frozen on Friday, right? So it is the certainty of uncertainty that we're having to deal with today in the business community. Now, on the bank situation itself, what, what concerns me is how did certain investors uh, become aware to pull 42 point, $42 point, uh, billion dollars out on Thursday? What, what was the whisper or how did they pick up on that? How is it that the bank employees got paid and many of the entrepreneurs and the startup companies couldn't make payroll because their accounts were frozen? So there seemed to be some potential inequity there. I, I don't know, but it's just on the surface uh, would raise some eyebrows. 